Welcome to Impact. I'm Michelle Oliveira. In this episode, we tell stories of the relationship between humans and nature. Our first story explores individual expression through a living art form that has spanned continents and generations. Take a look. Hold it this way. So, oh. Yeah. When my father first started bonsai, he was a gardener. In the 60s, now the Japanese were the gardeners. They collected wonderful materials from people's yard. <laughs> Roy Nagatoshi runs a bonsai nursery and teaches this ancient art form in Selmar, California. My father's first bonsai, <clears throat> it's out there, it's a, it's a Japanese boxwood. That particular boxwood was growing right on the side of the driveway of this apartment building. But because it's been run over so many times, the tree didn't die, but it keeps fighting back. It wants to grow, you know, and develop this wonderful scars, interesting bend on that thing, and uh, he, made, he made a great bonsai material. Nagatoshi says almost any tree can become bonsai. The only requirement, it has to be alive. Hobbyists most often get the raw material of bonsai by purchasing it from a nursery. But some enthusiasts look for trees that started life in the ground, collecting them from wild and urban landscapes. Bonsaiists rarely grow trees from seeds or cuttings. That tacks a few more years onto an already long process. You can go and uh, collect something and it may take five to ten years before all the elements of that start to come together to where it really looks like a, a, what you'd consider an art piece. Ted Matson is vice president of the Golden State Bonsai Federation, an umbrella organization for the state's many local bonsai clubs. Matson says trees don't become bonsai simply with time spent in a shallow container. One of the things that, that makes bonsai unique is this combination of uh, artistry and horticultural uh, science. And a good bonsai has to have um, elements of both. Bonsaiists go to club meetings and classes to learn techniques and receive guidance from a sensei or a teacher. Nagatoshi travels throughout the United States and internationally doing workshops and demonstrations but his local students mostly come from the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. They bring trees and skill sets at various stages of development. Nagatoshi says when he designs a tree, he looks for a way to highlight its interesting features. Yeah, something has to break up over here. Though bonsai, or tree in a pot, first appeared in China more than a thousand years ago, the Japanese refined the practice into a highly formalized art. Bonsai master Ben Oki is curator of the bonsai collection at the Huntington Botanical Gardens in San Marino. Uh, I was eight years old. My grandmother took me to carnival. I saw the bonsai in a display, and one of them very impressed me. Pomegranate hanging down a small tree in a big pomegranate hanging down in a tree. That's the reason I started interested in the bonsai. Oki moved to California and met the man some call the father of modern bonsai. Then in 1958, I find a bonsai master, Mr. Janaka. That's where I start the bonsai. And without Mr. Janaka, I don't have any bonsai for myself. Oki studied with Naka for years. In the 1970s, Oki began traveling with Naka, teaching alongside him. The American Bonsai Society recognizes both Naka's and Oki's contributions to advancing the art, giving awards in their names. Oki's honors his skill as a teacher and the way he encouraged each student to develop their own style. Bonsai is a very subjective art form, and part of the challenge is different people will see, even off of a single trunk line, see a, a wide range of variations as to how the finished tree can be expressed. But that's also what makes it fun too, is that there is all this, this room for individual expression to come in, even though we're working with some very codified and, and basic rules. Those rules guide designers to find a bonsai style in a trunk's line. But that's just the beginning of the design process. Uh, 
You want to create, you want to go with twin trunk? You want to try twin trunk? Uh, I prefer probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What the objective of bonsai is, it's really to replicate what we see in nature. Not to make an exact copy, but to replicate the elements that evoke the feelings that when we look at a, a bonsai that is maybe 15 inches tall, we get the same feeling that, that we can get in looking at that representative tree maybe 50 feet tall. While designing sets the stage for bonsai, it's training that transforms the raw material into art. Wiring gets branches to grow in a desired direction. Wire remains on the tree for about six months before it's clipped away. Grafting is a way for bonsaiers to add branches or change a bonsai's foliage. I grafted the Chinese juniper, which has a much better quality of foliage compared to uh, its original foliage. Nagatoshi says grafting adds about a year to the training process. Many of these initial tasks of designing and training can be accomplished in a few hours. But both pre-bonsai, as bonsai in training is called, and developed bonsai also require frequent and ongoing care. You develop this relationship with your trees based on your daily care, watering, uh, paying attention to how they grow, how they decline, how they get strong, all the, all the things that go into, you know, day-to-day -day life for your tree. Every day you have to keep watching, keep water. Water is very important. Very important thing is that you cannot skip the watering. Bonsai need frequent watering because shallow pots limit the amount of soil, moisture, and nutrients available to the tree. So even one day without water can stress some species. However, there's more to bonsai maintenance than a daily drink. Nagatoshi says he feeds his trees with fertilizer every three months. He also protects them from Southern California's extreme rays with a tarp that filters sunlight. And he says bonsaiists have to be on the lookout for creepy crawlies. If you're a bonsai owner, you gotta be uh, keep your eyes open because pests can do some serious damage to the tree. And then there is an invisible threat, disease. For that, Nagatoshi relies on a familiar household product. If you read the label, you know, it says it kills 99.9% .9 of the germ. And you, when you talk about germ, you're talking about everything, fungus, uh, bacteria, virus type disease. Nagatoshi spends much of his time trimming and grooming foliage. Well, of course, you're dealing with something living. They keep growing, too, just like our hair, you know. So occasionally you have to give a haircut. Well, let's take an example of dogs, taking the dogs to a groomer. They not only clip the hairs, but they also have to comb out excessive amount of accumulated hair inside. We do the same thing with bonsai, too. Nagatoshi says a fear of cutting too much prevents many hobbyists from achieving a bonsai's potential. They, it loses the shape. Uh, it doesn't have that tidy look to it. And you're not presenting the optimum aesthetic value of the tree. Even when bonsaiists succeed in presenting a tree's optimum aesthetic value, Matson says bonsai in the U.S. are less likely to be seen as art pieces than they would be in Europe and Japan. Bonsai becomes an art the minute that you take a piece of raw material and you begin pursuing the more idealized form within that material. The, the minute that you cut the first branch, I think it starts that piece of material on its path toward an art piece. Nagatoshi doesn't hang price tags on his bonsai, but many sell for several hundred and even thousands of dollars. But it's not just bonsai's skill and talent that people are paying for when they buy bonsai. Availability of plant material and where a tree comes from play roles. Some may be imported from Japan or collected from the wild, where a tree might have had hundreds of years to develop the character of age. A large part of the value repays the investment of time that someone else has put into a tree. Almost three years of growth right there.
The trees that have, have been in training, developed, worked on for bonsai are always going to be much higher than trees that are much more raw. And then there's the bonsai pot. It not only has the practical function of containing the miniature tree, but also contributes to its overall aesthetic quality. Pot by itself, some pot maybe a couple hundred dollars too. Cause small pots, maybe 15, 20 dollars. But bonsai again, take time to grow too. That, that reason maybe expense, huh? yeah. To be the good masterpiece, take training maybe 20, 30 years to be the good masterpiece. Ben Oki has been part of the culture of bonsai long enough to see bonsai go from backyard hobby to marketplace commodity. Bon bonsai have a politics too. They do? Yeah, yeah. Not much in Southern California, but if I go to some other state, sometimes money talk, people buy good bonsai with money, then show off something like that. Matson says for him, the reward of bonsai is not so much in possessing things of beauty, but in the process of creating them. It's a process he says can be frustrating for some. It's a natural thing for Westerners to kind of jump in and want to impose their will on trees. But for me personally, I found that when I was able to give myself over to the process again, let myself live with the tree and draw the bonsai that was in a piece of material out, my experience just transformed and it became much more rewarding and the results that I produced became much better too. I've run into very few lawyers doing bonsai because they don't have that patience. They want to see the result right away and with bonsai it doesn't happen, you know. Bonsai has traditionally been a hobby for retirees, who often have the time and patience needed to train and care for bonsai. But Matson says the Federation encourages young people to pursue the art through scholarship programs. While the culture of bonsai is often seen as kind of a, a, a pursuit for older people, it really is more ideally suited for younger people because those who start at a young enough age where they can see, you know, a few decades of, of potential of working with their trees, those are the ones who really have the chance to see their efforts come to fruition. Matson says bonsai can be a lifelong commitment and more. Quite likely, uh, if you do everything to keep that tree healthy and happy, it will outlive you. Many bonsai that have outlived their owners have been donated to the Huntington, where Oki says they can trust their trees will be looked after properly. It's also a place where the public can enjoy them, learn about Japanese art and culture, and even find inspiration. You done? Yeah. No, you're not, no, you're not done at all.